The Kingdom of Romania Romanian, Regatul Romaniae, was a constitutional monarchy at the crossroads of Eastern and Southeastern Europe which existed from 1881, when Prince Karl of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen was crowned as King Carol I of Romania, until 1947, when King Michael I of Romania abdicated and the Parliament proclaimed Romania a republic. From 1859 to 1877, Romania evolved from a personal union of two vassal principalities Moldavia and Wallachia under a single prince to an autonomous principality with a Hohenzollern monarchy. The country gained its independence from the Ottoman Empire during the 1877–1878 Russo-Turkish War known locally as the Romanian War of Independence, when it also received northern Dobruja in exchange for the southern part of Bessarabia. The kingdom's territory during the reign of King Carol I, between the 14th of March (OS) the 27th of March (NS) 1881 and the 27th of September (OS) the 10th of October (NS) 1914, is sometimes referred as the Romanian Old Kingdom to distinguish it from Greater Romania, which included the provinces that became part of the state after World War I: Bessarabia, Bukovina, and Transylvania. With the exception of the southern halves of Bukovina and Transylvania, these territories were ceded to neighboring countries in 1940, under the pressure of Nazi Germany or the Soviet Union. Following a disastrous World War II campaign on the side of the Axis powers and name change Legionary Romania, Romania joined the Allies in 1944, recovering northern Transylvania. The influence of the neighboring Soviet Union and the policies followed by communist-dominated coalition governments ultimately led to the abolition of the monarchy, with Romania becoming a People's Republic on the last day of 1947. <laughs> Unification and monarchy The 1859 ascendancy of Alexandru Ioan Cuza as prince of both Moldavia and Wallachia under the nominal suzerainty of the Ottoman Empire united an identifiably Romanian nation under a single ruler. On 5 February 1862 the, 24th of January old style, the two principalities were formally united to form the Principality of Romania, with Bucharest as its capital. On 23 February 1866 a so-called monstrous coalition, composed of conservatives and radical liberals, forced Cusa to abdicate. The German prince Charles of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen was appointed as Prince of Romania, in a move to assure German backing to unity and future independence. He immediately adopted the Romanian spelling of his name, Carol, and his descendants would rule Romania until the overthrow of the monarchy in 1947. Following the Russo-Turkish War of 1877–1878, Romania was recognized as an independent state by the Treaty of Berlin, 1878 and acquired Dobruja, although it was forced to surrender southern Bessarabia Budjak to Russia. On 15 March 1881, as an assertion of full sovereignty, the Romanian parliament raised the country to the status of a kingdom, and Carol was crowned as king on 10 May. The new state, squeezed between the Ottoman, Austro-Hungarian, and Russian empires, with Slavic populations on its southwestern, southern, and northeastern borders, the Black Sea due east, and Hungarian neighbors on its western and northwestern borders, looked to the west, particularly France, for its cultural, educational, and administrative models. Abstaining from the initial Balkan War against the Ottoman Empire, the Kingdom of Romania entered the Second Balkan War in June 1913 against the Tsardom of Bulgaria. 330,000 Romanian troops troops moved across the Danube and into Bulgaria. One army occupied southern Dobruja and another moved into northern Bulgaria to threaten Sofia, helping to bring an end to the war. Romania thus acquired the ethnically mixed territory of southern Dobruja, which it had desired for years. In 1916 Romania entered World War I on the Entente side. Romania engaged in a conflict against Bulgaria but as a result Bulgarian forces, after a series of successful battles, regained Dobruja, which had been previously ceded from Bulgaria by the Treaty of Bucharest and the Berlin Congress. Although the Romanian forces did not fare well militarily, by the end of the war the Austrian and Russian empires were gone. Governing bodies created in Transylvania, Bessarabia and Bukovina chose union with Romania, upheld in 1919 the Treaty of Saint-Germain and in 1920 by the Treaty of Trianon. Topic: <laughs> Romanian Old Kingdom 1881 to 1918. 
The Romanian Old Kingdom Romanian, Vecil Regat or just Regat, German, Regat or Altrike is a colloquial term referring to the territory covered by the first independent Romanian nation-state, which was composed of the Danubian principalities—Wallachia and Moldavia. It was achieved when, under the auspices of the Treaty of Paris 1856, the ad hoc divans of both countries, which were under imperial Ottoman suzerainty at the time, voted for Alexander Ioan Cusa as their prince, thus achieving a de facto unification. The region itself is defined by the result of that political act, followed by the inclusion of northern Dobruja in 1878, the proclamation of the Kingdom of Romania in 1881, and the annexation of southern Dobruja in 1913. The term came into use after World War I, when the Old Kingdom was opposed to Greater Romania, which included Transylvania, Banat, Bessarabia, and Bukovina. Nowadays, the term mainly has a historical relevance, and is otherwise used as a common term for all regions in Romania included in both the Old Kingdom and present-day borders namely, Wallachia, Moldavia, and northern Dobruja. Maps Topic. World War I Romania delayed in entering World War I, but ultimately declared war on the Central Powers in 1916. The Romanian military campaign ended in stalemate when the Central Powers quickly crushed the country's offensive into Transylvania and occupied Wallachia and Dobruja, including Bucharest and the strategically important oil fields, by the end of 1916. In 1917, despite fierce Romanian resistance, especially at Marisesti, due to Russia's withdrawal from the war following the October Revolution, Romania, being almost completely surrounded by the Central Powers, was forced to also drop from the war, signing the Armistice of Foxani and next year, in May 1918, the Treaty of Bucharest. But after the successful offensive on the Thessaloniki front which put Bulgaria out of the war, Romania's government quickly reasserted control and put an army back into the field on November 10, 1918, a day before the war ended in Western Europe. Following the proclamation of the Union of Transylvania with the Kingdom of Romania on December 1, 1918, by the representatives of Transylvanian Romanians gathered at Alba Iulia, Transylvania was soon united with the kingdom, as was Bessarabia earlier in 1918, since the power vacuum in Russia caused by the civil war there allowed Svatel Tari, or National Council, to proclaim the Union of Bessarabia with Romania. War with the Hungarian Soviet Republic in 1919 resulted in the occupation of Budapest by Romanian troops and the end of Bela Kun's Bolshevik regime. Topic: <laughs> Union with Transylvania, Bessarabia and Bukovina. At the Paris Peace Conference, Romania received territories of Transylvania, part of Banat and other territories from Hungary, while as well Bessarabia eastern Moldavia between Prut and Dniester rivers and Bukovina. In the Treaty of Trianon, Hungary renounced in favour of Romania all the claims of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy over Transylvania. The union of Romania with Bukovina was ratified in 1919 in the Treaty of Saint-Germain, and in 1920 some of the Western powers recognized Romanian rule over Bessarabia by the Treaty of Paris. Thus, Romania in 1920 was more than twice the size it had been in 1914. The last territorial change during this period came in 1923, when a few border settlements were exchanged between Romania and Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. The most notable Romanian acquisition was the town of Jimbolia, while the most notable Yugoslav acquisition was the town of Jasa Tomic. Although the country had no further territorial claims, it aroused the enmity of Bulgaria, and especially Hungary and the Soviet Union. It is worth noting, however, that the Treaty of Paris, recognizing the union with Bessarabia, never came into effect because one of its signatories, Japan, refused to ratify it. This meant that the Union was not recognized by the international society, making it, unlike the other provinces, more of a de facto Union than an official, de jure one. Furthermore, President Wilson left the peace conference to emphasize his disagreements. Following the U.S. Congress did not ratify the Treaty of Trianon, the United States of America and the Kingdom of Hungary signed a separate peace treaty on 29 August 1921. Greater Romania now encompassed a significant minority population, especially of Hungarians, and faced the difficulty of assimilation. Transylvania had significant Hungarian and German population, and with a historically contemptuous attitude towards Romanians, they now feared reprisals. 
Both groups were effectively excluded from politics as the post-war Romanian regime passed an edict stating that all personnel employed by the state had to speak Romanian. The new Romanian state was also a highly centralized one, so it was unlikely that the Hungarian or German minorities would exercise political influence without personal connections in the government in Bucharest. The Romanian policy towards Hungarians and Germans was fairly balanced, and both were permitted to have schools in their respective languages and the freedom to publish written material. Judicial hearings would also be conducted in their native official languages. Lesser minorities were not as well treated because of their small numbers and because they had no outside power to support them. Jews in particular were highly unpopular. Despite Jews being less than 10% of the Romanian population, Jewish individuals held a disproportionate control of small businesses, banks, shops, factories, and the skilled trades and crafts. Furthermore, an essentially urban population, the ones in the new territories had been culturally assimilated by the former empires, having little contact with the mostly rural Romanians. Romanian education was a mixed bag. While the nobility had a long tradition of sending their sons to Europe's finest schools, the educated were a tiny minority. Transylvania had the most educated population in Romania, while Bessarabia fared the worst. While all Romanian children were required to attend at least four years of school, few actually went and the system was designed to separate those who would go on to higher education from those who would not. While this was partially necessary due to limited resources, it also ensured that peasants had almost no chance of becoming educated. High school and college education in Romania was modeled after French schools. Students undertook a rigid curriculum based around the liberal arts and anyone who could pass was very well educated. However, Romania suffered from the same problem as the rest of Eastern Europe, which was that most students preferred abstract subjects like theology, philosophy, literature, the fine arts, and law in the philosophical rather than the applied sense to practical ones like science, business, and engineering. The peasant population was among the poorest in the region, a situation aggravated by one of Europe's highest birth rates. As elsewhere, peasants everywhere were convinced that land reform would solve their problems, and after the war they began to clamor loudly for such action, which led to the 1921 land reform. But it did precious little to improve productivity, especially since the richness of Romania's soil was negated by a lack of modern farming techniques. Agricultural exports could not compete with those of Western Europe and North America, and the onset of the Great Depression caused the market for them to completely dry up. In 1919, a staggering 72% of Romanians were engaged in agriculture. And due to one of Europe's highest birth rates, as much as a quarter of the rural population was unnecessary surplus. Farming was primitive and machinery and chemical fertilizers almost unheard of. The regat Romania was traditionally a land of large estates worked by peasants who either had no land of their own or else dwarf plots. The situation in Transylvania and Bessarabia was marginally better. After peasant calls for land reform snowballed into an avalanche, King Ferdinand had to oblige, especially once the Russian Revolution had encouraged peasants to take the matter in their own hands. In the end, it did nothing to remedy the basic problems of rural overpopulation and technological backwardness. The redistributed plots were invariably too small to feed their owners and peasants also could not overcome their tradition of growing grain over cash crops. Since draft animals were rare, to say nothing of machinery, actual agricultural productivity was worse than before. Despite the land reforms, landowners still controlled up to 30% of Romania's soil, also including the forests that peasants needed for fuel. Romania also had little opportunity to export agricultural products since the biggest ones like grain couldn't possibly compete with producers in the United States or elsewhere. Romanian industry was quite well developed due to an abundance of natural resources, especially oil. Lumber and various minerals were produced mainly for export, but most industry was owned by foreign companies, over 70% during the interwar period. Topic: Industrial development. Pre-Kingdom era to World War I At the time of the proclamation of the kingdom, there were already several industrial facilities in the country, the Asan and Olamazu steam mills, built in 1853 and 1862 respectively, a brick factory built in 1865, and two sugar factories built in 1873, among others. In 1857, the first oil refinery in the world was built at Ployesti. 
In 1880, after several railways were built, the CFR was founded. After proclamation of the kingdom, the pre-established industrial facilities began to be highly developed, six more, larger, sugar factories were built and the railway network was expanded more. Another, more modern brick factory was built in 1891. Despite all of these industrial achievements, the overwhelming majority of Romania's economy remained the agriculture. Topic. Interwar years Despite the destruction provoked by the First World War, Romanian industry managed significant growth, as a result of new establishments and development of the older ones. The MALAXA Industrial Engineering and Manufacturing Company was established in 1921 by Romanian industrialist Nicolae Malaxa and dealt especially with rolling stock maintenance and manufacturing. It developed rapidly, and by 1930 Romania had managed to cease importing locomotives altogether, all required rolling stock being supplied by the local industry. Industrial facilities acquired along with the new provinces, such as the Rosita Works, also contributed to the rapid development of Romanian heavy industry. Other important establishments were the Copsa Mica Works, producing non-ferrous metals and the Romanian optical enterprise. Construction also developed, as great monuments like the Karaman Cross 1928, Arcul de Trium F 1936, and the Mausoleum of Marisesti 1938 were erected. The oil industry was also greatly expanded, making Romania one of the top oil exporters by the late 1930s, which also attracted German and Italian interest. <laughs> Armament industry Romanian military industry during World War I was mainly focused on converting various fortification guns into field and anti-aircraft artillery. Up to 334 German 53mm Farpanzer guns, 93 French 57mm Hotchkiss guns, 66 Krupp 150mm guns and dozens more 210mm guns were mounted on Romanian-built carriages and transformed into mobile field artillery, with 45 Krupp 75mm guns and 132 Hotchkiss 57mm guns being transformed into anti-aircraft artillery. The Romanians also upgraded 120 German Krupp 105mm howitzers, the result being the most effective field howitzer in Europe at that time. Romania even managed to design and build from scratch its own model of mortar, the 250mm Negre model 1916. Other Romanian technological assets include the building of Vlaku 3, the world's first aircraft made of metal. The Romanian Navy possessed the largest warships on the Danube. They were a class of four river monitors, built locally at the Galati shipyard using parts manufactured in Austria-Hungary, and the first one launched was Lasker Katerju, in 1907. The Romanian monitors displaced almost 700 tons, were armed with three 120mm naval guns in three turrets, two 120mm naval howitzers, four 47mm anti-aircraft guns and two 6.5 machine guns. The monitors took part in the Battle of Turtikaya and the First Battle of Kobaden. The Romanian-designed Schneider 150mm model 1912 howitzer was considered one of the most modern field guns on the Western Front. The Romanian armament industry was expanded greatly during the interwar period and World War II. New factories were constructed, such as the Industria Aeronautica Romana and Societatea Pentru Exploatari Tennis Aircraft Factories, which produced hundreds of indigenous aircraft, such as IAR-37, IAR-80 and SET-7. Before the war, Romania acquired from France the license to produce hundreds of Brandt MLE 2731 and Brandt MLE 1935 mortars, with hundreds more produced during the war, and also the license to produce 140 French 47mm Schneider anti tank guns at the Concordia factory, with 118 produced between 26 May 1939 and 1 August 1940, and hundreds more produced during the war. These guns were to be towed by Malaxa Tip UE armored carriers years, built since late 1939 at the Malaxa factory under French license, eventually 126 being built until March 1941. Czechoslovak license was acquired in 1938 to produce the ZBVZ. 30 machine gun, with 5,000 being built at the Cougar gun factory until the start of Operation Barbarossa in June 1941. Romania also acquired the license to produce the AIV tankette, but ultimately only one prototype was built locally. 
German license was acquired in 1938 to produce 360 37mm Rheinmetall anti-aircraft guns, but only 102 were produced until May 1941. British license was acquired to produce 100 Vickers model 1931 75mm anti-aircraft guns at the Rosita Works, with the first battery of six guns entering service on 1 August 1939, and 100 more guns were built during the war for a total production of 200. On 14 June, Romania launched the first locally built warship, the minelayer Amiral Mergescu. During the war, Romania copied and produced hundreds of Soviet M1938 mortars, as well as designing and producing up to 475 mm Rosita model 1943 anti-tank guns. Infantry weapons designed and produced by Romania during the war include the Orita M1941 sub-machine gun and the Argus flamethrower. Romania also built 30 Vanatoral de Care R35, 34 TACAM T60, 21 TACAM R2 tank destroyers and rebuilt 34 captured Soviet Komsomolais armoured tractors. A few prototype vehicles were also built, such as the Marisol tank destroyer, which is credited with being the inspiration for the German Hetzer, a Renault R35 tank with a T26 turret and an artillery tractor known as T1. Warships built include the submarines Reconal and Marsuinal, a class of four minesweepers, six Dutch-designed torpedo boats and two gunboats. The interbellum inter years The Romanian expression Romania Mare literal translation, Great Romania, but more commonly rendered in English, Greater Romania generally refers to the Romanian state in the interwar period, and by extension, to the territory Romania covered at the time. Romania achieved at that time its greatest territorial extent almost 300,000 square kilometers. At the 1930 census, there were over 18 million inhabitants in Romania. The resulting, Greater Romania, did not survive World War II. Until 1938, Romania's governments maintained the form, if not always the substance, of a liberal constitutional monarchy. The National Liberal Party, dominant in the years immediately after World War I, became increasingly clientelist and nationalist, and in 1927 was supplanted in power by the National Peasants' Party. Between 1930 and 1940 there were over 25 separate governments. On several occasions in the last few years before World War II, the rivalry between the fascist Iron Guard and other political groupings approached the level of a civil war. Upon the death in 1927 of his father, King Ferdinand, Prince Carol was prevented from succeeding him because of previous marital scandals that had resulted in his renunciation of rights to the throne. After living three years in exile, with his brother Nikolai serving as regent and his young son Michael as king, Carol changed his mind and with the support of the ruling National Peasants' Party he returned and proclaimed himself king. Yuliu Maniu, leader of the National Peasants' Party, engineered Carol's return on the basis of a promise that he would forsake his mistress Magda Lupescu, and Lupescu herself had agreed to the arrangement. However, it became clear upon Carol's first re-encounter with his former wife, Elena, that he had no interest in a reconciliation with her, and Carol soon arranged for Magda Lupescu's return to his side. Her unpopularity in Romania, no doubt due, in large part, to her having a Jewish father, was to be a millstone around Carol's neck for the rest of his reign, particularly because she was widely viewed as his closest advisor and confidant. The 1929 economic crisis greatly affected Romania and the early 1930s were marked by social unrest, high unemployment, and strikes. In several instances, the Romanian government violently repressed strikes and riots, notably the 1929 miners' strike in Valea Giului and the strike in the Gravita Railroad workshops. In the mid-1930s, the Romanian economy recovered and the industry grew significantly, although about 80% of Romanians were still employed in agriculture. As the 1930s progressed, Romania's already shaky democracy slowly deteriorated toward fascist dictatorship. The Constitution of 1923 gave the king free reign to dissolve parliament and call elections at will. As a result, Romania was to experience over 25 governments in a single decade. Increasingly, these governments were dominated by a number of anti-Semitic, ultra-nationalist, and mostly at least quasi-fascist parties. The National Liberal Party steadily became more nationalistic than liberal, but nonetheless lost its dominance over Romanian politics. 
It was eclipsed by parties like the relatively moderate National Peasants Party and its more radical Romanian front offshoot, the National Christian Defense League Lance and the Iron Guard. In 1935, Lance merged with the National Agrarian Party to form the National Christian Party NCP. The quasi-mystical fascist Iron Guard was an earlier Lance offshoot that, even more than these other parties, exploited nationalist feelings, fear of communism, and resentment of alleged foreign and Jewish domination of the economy. Already, the Iron Guard had embraced the politics of assassinations, and various governments had reacted more or less in kind. On December 10, 1933, Liberal Prime Minister Ion Duca dissolved the Iron Guard, arresting thousands. Consequently, 19 days later, he was assassinated by Iron Guard legionnaires. Throughout the 1930s, these nationalist parties had a mutually distrustful relationship with King Carol II. Nonetheless, in December 1937, the king appointed Lance leader, the poet Octavian Goga, as prime minister. Around this time, Carol met with Adolf Hitler, who expressed his wish to see a Romanian government headed by the pro Nazi Iron Guard. Instead, on 10 February 1938, King Carol II used the occasion of a public insult by Goga toward Lupescu as a reason to dismiss the government and institute a short lived royal dictatorship, sanctioned 17 days later by a new constitution under which the king named personally not only the prime minister but all the ministers. In April 1938, King Carol had Iron Guard leader Cornelia Zalia Codrianu aka the Captain, arrested and imprisoned. On the night of 29 to 30 November 1938, Codrianu and several other legionnaires were killed while purportedly attempting to escape from prison. It is generally agreed that there was no such escape attempt, but that they were murdered in retaliation for a series of assassinations by Iron Guard commandos. The royal dictatorship was brief. On 7 March 1939, a new government was formed with Armand Kalinescu as Prime Minister. On 21 September 1939, three weeks after the start of World War II, Kalinescu, in turn, was also assassinated by legionnaires avenging Kodrianu's murder. In 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union signed the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, which stipulated, among other things, the Soviet interest in Bessarabia. After the 1940 territorial losses and growing increasingly unpopular, Carroll was compelled to abdicate and name General Ion Antonescu as the new Prime Minister with full powers in ruling the state by royal decree. Monarchs Demographics According to the 1930 Romanian census, Romania had a population of 18,057,028. Romanians made up 71.9% of the population and 28.1% of the population were ethnic minorities. <coughs> cities Largest cities as per 1930 census Notes, one including 12 suburban communities Administrative division After independence, the Romanian Old Kingdom was divided into 33 counties. After World War I, as a result of the 1925 Administrative Unification Law, the territory was divided into 71 counties, 489 districts and 8,879 communes. In 1938, King Carol II promulgated a new constitution, and subsequently he had the administrative division of the Romanian territory changed. Ten tinitori approximate translation, lands, were created by merging the counties to be ruled by residenti regali approximate translation, royal residents, appointed directly by the king. This administrative reform did not last and the counties were re-established after the fall of Carol's regime. Topic. Timeline 1859 Selection of newspapers of the Kingdom of Romania Topic. Kings of Romania 1881 Topic. Queen's Consort of Romania Topic. Pretenders to the Romanian throne. Topic: 
Timeline This is a graphical lifespan timeline of heirs and pretenders to the Romanian throne. The heirs and the pretenders are listed in chronological order. <laughs> 